Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me that it's going to the house of the Lord. I can just stand within my gates, O Jerusalem. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. <coughs>
Lord. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give God some praise in this place for so his definitely words. For so this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, clap your head. If you're happy and you know Jesus is the light, say amen. 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 I'm just truly excited to be in God's presence with each and every one of you again. To God be the glory. Just another welcome for myself to you. To those who are aligned with us, to one way assembly where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father except he be drawn by him. Amen. 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 God blessed us on last Sunday. We had a very blessed occasion. Yes. Yes. The four yes. women in the word relay was a yes. major success. Yes. To God be the glory again. Yes. It's truly a blessing to see each and every one of you. Yes. And just glad to be here. God's grace Amen. kept us yes. week Amen. after week, yes. Amen. moment after moment, day after day. Yes. Amen. So God be the glory. Well, let us do this. I'm going to give us a word of prayer. And today's passage is a very unique one. One of my favorite um, Bible stories uh, when I was a child. Yes. It's always good to see how does it look now. Yes. You know, some of these uh, Sunday school lessons, um, we looked at them, studied them when we were children in the children's books, but then we can reflect over our own lives how they become an area of application. Yeah. And we get a whole new essence of meaning. So this morning, this passage will be coming from the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Verses 1 through 5, as you are looking for that, I'm going to provide us with a word of prayer. The book of Joshua, chapter 6, 1 through 5. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Yes, Lord. That awakened us up this morning and provided us with your traveling grace. Yes, Thank you. That has allowed us to arrive safe and sound Amen. to this Amen. place of worship. Yes. Thank you. Father God, we ask that you remove anything that's not right within our heart, spirit, mind, and our souls. Yes, Lord. And fill us with your Holy Spirit, who is the instructor, the Ruach, the mighty yes. Russian wind, yes, to awaken these scriptures to our heart, spirit, mind, and our souls so we can understand what you're trying to say to us. Today. Yes, Lord. Father, we invite your Holy Spirit in here. Yes, thank you. And online to wherever your Zoom listener, viewer, callers, and Facebookers are located, Father. Yes, Lord. We thank you so much and we ask these blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 So we have a very unique passage. I'm quite sure a lot of you know. As I gave that text, you already know what we're working with, amen? amen. So we're going to be looking at this particular passage, Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to be reading this in a basic English version for your hearing. Verse 1 says, now Jericho was closed up tight because of the Israelites. All right. No one went out or came in. Once you came in, you was in, you was out, you out. <laughs> Wasn't no running in and out of here. Okay. City of Jericho. Verse 2 says, Now the Lord said to Joshua, Look, I have given Jericho and its king into your power, mm -hmm. along with its mighty warriors. And verse 3 says, circle the city with all the soldiers mm -hmm. 
going around the city one time. Do this for six days. So basically God wants his people, the children of Israel, once a day to walk around the city of Jericho. Verse four says, there's some order to this though. Mm -hmm. He says, have seven priests carry seven trumpets made from ram's horns in the front of the chest. When it says the chest, it is referring to the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. On the seventh day, circle the city seven times with the priest blowing the trumpets. So you got that. First six days, one time. On the seventh day, how many times? Seven. Does anyone know what the number seven means? Completion. Completion. Good. So verse five says, have them blow a long blast on the ram's horn. As soon as you hear the trumpet blast, have all the people shout out a loud war cry. Then the city wall will collapse and the people will rise up attacking straight ahead. Okay. This morning we will deal with section D of verse 5 where it basically says this. Then the city wall will collapse and the people will rise up attacking straight ahead. I need to preach, teach a message entitled this morning, When a Obstacle Becomes a Opportunity. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me say that one more time. When a obstacle yes. becomes a opportunity. Did you have any obstacles? getting here this morning? Did anyone cut you off? Was somebody in your way to get to the restroom this morning? Well, I wonder how many of us or you this morning would say to yourself, I'm actually facing an obstacle right now this morning. All right. Okay. And it may be the biggest obstacle of my life right now. I'm in one so bad that I left that obstacle right at home this morning. All right. Did you leave your obstacle at home this morning? But you can praise God that you're right here, right now, in spite. Well, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that's good. Testify. Well, someone may say, once I get out of church today, my obstacle is going to be waiting for me. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> for others, you may be simply coasting through life these days, and you're thinking, obstacle? What obstacle? You see, I see you. How you doing? I'm good. I'm cool. I'm chilling. Everything 100. I don't have any obstacles. My bank account is up. My blood pressure is down. My marriage is great. My okay. friends are being very nice to me right now. Okay. Give it a minute. Well, my relationship is good. My car is running well. Your credit score is at a high 700. And I'm as healthy as an ox. All right. Oh, I forgot about this I'm vaxxed, and I got all six of them, and I'm good. You see, well, let me say this to you this morning. Enjoy it now, 
because your Monday morning is coming. Please don't think that I'm being negative this morning. I'm just keeping it realistic. All right. Okay. All right. For you, it may be a family obstacle. It might be a financial obstacle. It might be a moral obstacle. It might be a health obstacle. It might be a drug obstacle. Yes, sir. It might be a marriage obstacle. It may be a relationship obstacle. It may be a situationship obstacle. It may be an alcohol obstacle. Well, this morning from the word of God, I want to show you how to overcome your obstacles by faith this morning. And I also want to show you how to turn your obstacle into an opportunity to bring glory to God for your own good. Amen. 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 You see, if there was ever a man who learned how to overcome obstacles by faith, was the man Joshua. You see, in fact, his faith was so great that it landed him in God's great faith hall of fame. All right. Did y'all know that God has a faith hall of fame? I mean, we have the baseball Hall of Fame. We have a football Hall of Fame, and then we have the baseball, basketball, football. We got all these often uh, rock and roll Hall of Fame, right? All right? Isn't that something? But God has a faith Hall of Fame. How about that? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Though he is not named in it, his faith and his work was inducted Amen. into God's Hall of Fame. And the Faith Hall of Fame is found where in the New Testament? Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Starting at that 30th verse. That's good. You see, it says, by faith, this is what it says in verse 30, the walls of Jericho fell down after they was encircled. How many times? Seven times. Well, let's look into the context of chapter 6 in the book of Joshua for a moment. You see, verses one through five deals with the instruction about Jericho. And that's where our text is found this morning. And then verses six through 21, it deals with Israel's destroys Jericho. Then verses 21 through 27, it deals with the consequences. So to observe the details, we have to go back to the Old Testament book of Joshua. So take your Bible and join me in Joshua chapter 6, if you can. As you're turning to Joshua chapter 6, let me give you the setting for the setup what's happening. You see, Moses has died at this point. He was dead. Yes. So God put Joshua in charge. All right. In fact, I'll read Joshua chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, while you sit patiently and wait for me at chapter 6. That's all right? All right. See, verse 2 in chapter 1 says, my servant Moses is dead. Now get ready to cross over to the Jordan with the entire people to the land that I'm going to give to the Israelites. Amen. You see, God already told me what I got. For Amen. Sometimes we don't pay attention when God is speaking or telling us things. Sometimes our faith doesn't let us relate to what God is about to do in your life. But God will tell you this. If you're not ready to receive it, I'm not going to give it to you. Amen. And that's the problem with a lot of us today. God has so much for you, but your faith is lacking. Your belief is lacking. Your prayer life is lacking. Your study, your Bible study, and your, your attitude is not ready to receive it. All right. So then he says in verse 3, I'm giving you every place where your foot will be set. Exactly as I promised Moses. Yeah. That's good. You see, they had not gone very far before they were faced with an obstacle. 
Always be mindful. When God has something for you, he tells you, guess who shows up? The adversary. All right. He will try to distract you from what God has for you. Amen. All you see, right. he does it all the time. All right. And the thing is, we read about it in Joshua chapter 6 as we think about Jericho. All right. It was the place that they had to decide whether to go forward with God or to turn around and return to the wilderness. Uh, you got to make a decision. Have you ever been in a place like this where you had to decide whether you were going to go in with God in this or you were going to turn around and go back where you came from? All right. Or you just go sit right there and be stuck on stupid. Okay. All right. You know, a situation that you know you should have been left, but you go sit right here mm. and write myself a letter. Uh, all right. Some of y'all, this old school back from the 50s. Oh, yeah. That little song there. You see, listen, there are some situations that God will place you in to prepare you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, for where he's sending you, you have to go through it to get to it. All right. See, God is trying to get his people to the promised land, but they are encountered with an obstacle of this great city. All right. You got to go through them to get where you got to go. Just like to the Super Bowl. You had to go through two teams last week to get there. Amen. Yeah, did you know they had to get past Jericho in order to pass go? All right. Y'all familiar with the Monopoly game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very unique game. In other words, you have to make sure you pass go to get paid. Wow. But there are so many obstacles around the four corners that might strip you of your money. All right. Yeah, you might go to jail. <laughs> you might be on parking place. All right. But it's something about boredom. All right. The next to the go, right? <laughs> See, boardwalk, if you don't own it, can hurt you. All right. <laughs> In other words, boardwalk has you watching as you roll the dots. All right. And you do the same thing in your life. You're trying to figure out how I'm going to succeed or proceed where I need to go in life, but you wake up every day throwing your life on the table. All right. But only if you got Jesus Christ Hallelujah. in your life, Amen. he will lead and guide you Amen. through your own daily book. Yeah. You see, boardwalk was like Jericho All to right. the children of Israel. They could not pass go until they passed boardwalk. All right. All right. So Jericho became their boardwalk. All right. Now I need to ask you, what's your Jericho in your life? All right. Is it a person? <laughs> Is it a place? Is it a thing? All right. Yeah, we worked with the nine parts of speech, but I think that now works good for us. Is it a person prohibiting you? Is it a place or a thing? All right. A thing falls under the areas of weed. You know what they call marijuana? Another name for marijuana? Mary Jane. The devil's lettuce. Probably ain't heard of that one, huh? I'm just showing you that there are some things in your life is just like a Jericho. All right. Are there any people? Is it a her, him, they? Is your Jericho? Oh, is it in certain places that you like to go? People you like to see. Is that your Jericho? Well, God had to take them through Jericho to experience God's best and blessings for them. Amen. And in many ways, that's where we are as a church. Yeah. That is why there are 52 Sundays in a year to prepare you for each week. And that's why your life 
your seasons, your moments, and your days are the same. Amen. God tries to prepare you. God tries to help you. Yes. But you want to Google this and Google that and run to Facebook and the ground to get your answer. All right. Isn't it interesting how God has it set up where he gives you a Sunday before your Monday starts? In other words, I'm trying to help prepare you yes. for your week, yes. but you don't come. All right. You don't see me. You don't come see me. I wake you up every day, bless you to get to your job. I wash over your children. I clothe you. I feed you. I do so much for you. But you don't have time for me, and that's why your Monday is morning Monday. All right. All right. Come on. It's the moody Monday. All right. Terrible Tuesday. All right. Wishful thinking Wednesday. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what your week consists of, All but right. God has placed the Sunday to help you throughout your week. So how do you overcome your obstacles by faith? How did Joshua and the children of Israel do it? Well, the first thing we read is about one. And I want to write this one down. The situation that was encountered. That's how it always is. God says, I'm going to bless you, but then the adversary shows up, right. trying to persuade you. Anytime you get good news, you know bad news is around the corner. All right. Yeah. All right. So God told them Moses All right. was given a promise that I'm going to get you to the promise land. Yeah. Yeah. But all of a sudden, God just allows Moses to look from Mount Hor. All right. You can look at it, but you can't go. I don't want to get into the logistics why Moses wasn't worthy to lead of it. A lot of good reason. Let me see something. Let me see if we got any Bible, Bible scholars in the house. What are some of the reasons Moses wasn't worthy to let them in? God spoke to Moses to not he struck the rock. That's one. He was supposed to speak. God had told them to speak to the rock. Amen. But he Smoke me, he hit the rock. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Yes, any others? Any reasons? Moses had an issue, he had an issue with the way he spoke. Uh -huh. God still worked through Moses with right. his speech issue or his speech impediment. All right, that's always my favorite story because. God basically said, Moses, I understand you have a stuttering problem, sir, but I don't think it's going to bother you just to say two words. All right. When Moses asked you, who sent you? All he says is, I am. Amen. Now. I don't think you're going to have trouble stuttering when you say, <laughs> I am. Amen. Now. So basically, Moses is one. He couldn't go in. How about this one? He represented the law. All right. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Moses yeah, yeah. is the lawgiver. Yeah. So yeah. God would not allow Moses into the promised land because he represents the law. Oh, oh yeah. Amen. And what about this one? Moses killed a man. Oh, oh yeah. Remember he killed the Egyptian? Yeah. So we got several situations going on why Moses could not be worthy to enter into the promised land. You know what that also means? Watch this. If Joshua's name, there's no J in the Greek letter. So we have to switch Joshua's name and put a Y there. All right. And it becomes Yahshua. All right. Right. Amen. So Joshua is a picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. Amen. Thank you. So if you was to pronounce Jesus' name, it's Yahshua. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So we have 
Joshua, Joshua leading the people into the promised land. So Jesus leads us into the new kingdom. Amen. Amen. Isn't that something? Because Moses represents the law. And if people would try to keep the law today, think they're going to get in. See that? But Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. Now, the situation that was encountered, now we find a couple of things as we consider the situation that Joshua and the children of Israel encountered. Yeah. What did they encounter? The challenge before them was verse one. Now Jericho was secretly shut up because of the children of Israel. Yeah. The people of Jericho were afraid yeah. of the Israelites. Oh, yeah. None went out and none came in. Yeah. Now, humanly speaking, Jericho was impossible to overcome. Y'all got that? Yeah. It was impossible because it was impassable. All right. You ever been in a situation where you couldn't go this way? You couldn't go that way. You couldn't go over. You couldn't go under. Mm -hmm. You just felt stuck in the corner. Mm -hmm. And you needed God's help. All yeah. right. Just like the children of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, they were confronted with the Red Sea. Yes. Pharaoh's army behind them. They had mounts to the left, mounts to the right. You have to be always ready Amen. for your obstacles. All but right. these obstacles in your life come because God is trying to give you a new opportunity Amen. through Amen. your obstacle. Amen. As I said, Jericho was impossible to overcome. It was impossible because it was impassable. Yeah. Jericho was surrounded by a wall 60 feet high yeah. and 30 feet wide. Yeah. You could drive three chariots side by side on the top of the wall. Wow. Mm. Kind of envision like the wall of the Great Wall of China, right? All right. So this wall was so high. Is so wide that you can ride three chariots side by side. There were no human means available to defeat it. We're not even talking about weapons. We're just talking about walk. All right. They couldn't climb it. They couldn't dig through it. Nor could they tunnel under it. So we read about the challenge before this. I need to pick real quick. I'm going to show you what this wall looks like we're working with. Anybody remember the story of Jericho? Yeah. Yeah, the story of Jericho is a very unique situation. All right. So when we look at the city of Jericho, this is a picture of ancient Jericho. Yes. We got a ditch right here. We have a revetment wall right here. And you notice they have a lower wall and an upper wall. Uh -huh. Very interesting, isn't it? Yes. So basically, this looks like a very unique community apartment complex mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> back in the day. Isn't that something? Let me see the next one. Talking about walls, look at this. These are people out here. So you have a retaining wall. Then you have the earthen embankment here. Mm -hmm. Then once you cross that one, there's the lower city. Then on top of that one, there's the upper city. So I'm wondering, was it like low income housing in the first section? And it was <laughs> upper class. Not sure how they ran it, but just giving you an example. And this is a picture of what it looks like when the walls 
came open because they was able to go through here and go on up a little higher. So it looks like God wanted them to get a little exercise. All right. All right. See, God has a very unique way of training you through the process of your trial. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you. So it's kind of like God wanted them to walk each day around at one time, the yes, six Lord. days. Yes, Lord. Then on the seventh day, he wanted them to walk how many times? So that's 13 times. What's the number 13? Number 13 is the number of rebellion. Rebellion. So these was a rebellious people. See, God speaks through numerology. Amen. Next Amen. picture. You all know I'm going to always let you see what it looks like today. All right. This is a picture of what it looks like, an aerial view of Jericho today, looking south. The trenches in the square is visible today. So this is what it looks like today. There's a little road that goes around it. And what's so unique when you're over there, has anyone been to Great America? Y'all remember the little baskets that usually fly over? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, they have the little <laughs> baskets that fly over this, which gives you a very good view. Amen. So that's how modern day Jericho looks. And I'm going to give you a close up one more. Modern day Jericho. We have a little observation gate right here where you can look around. They don't let you go too far in these particular areas, but you don't want nobody to fall down and I can't get up. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for that. So this was a real place. Amen. Amen. So we see that the first situation was that the challenge was before them of the great city. Well, what's next? Verse two deals with the certainty given to them. Verse two says, and the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, yes. its king and the mighty men of valor. Did you notice the tense of the verb? Watch this. Notice the tense of the verb God used here. Isn't that something? God uses the eight parts of speech in the text. He says it's the perfect tense in the Hebrew language which means that God is talking about the future as if it has already taken place. All right, all right. And you need to be reminded, whatever God has given you, yes. whatever he's told you yes. to your face all and right. spoke to your heart, yes. you have to know it as it is so. Amen. And don't Amen. doubt it. Amen. Walk it. Amen. 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 Yes, that's the past tip. A verb. God wanted Joshua to know that overcoming the Jericho obstacle was a good and it is done. Yes. That is what matters. Amen. It's a matter of time that you're going to be able to do it. Amen. He says, I have given Jericho into your hand. Do you see it? Yes, Lord. Do you see the blessings that God has in your life? Even though they haven't arrived yet. Okay. Hallelujah. He has greater things to come, but you got to believe it. Amen. Amen. Why do you think the first generation of the Israelites wasn't worthy to go in? Y'all remember the first generation was the ones who left out of Egypt under Pharaoh, right? Yes. 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 Their parents didn't go in. Right. He let their children go in. All right. Just like I told some people the other day, I said, do you realize God will lead you way out the way All right. Now. until he get his way? All right. They were trying to go a couple of miles, like from Richmond to Oakland. Right. We could easily get on board and get off at the Coliseum, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. But God said, y'all hard-headed. 
All right. You guys don't listen. You don't even believe me. All right, now. So you know what I'm going to do? We supposed to start in Richmond, right? All right. Let's go to Fairfield. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Conk. Let's go to Brentwood. Let's go to San Rafael. Let's go to San Francisco. I'm not letting y'all get to Oakland. All right, now. He took them way out the way and didn't let them see it. All right. Till now. they all died off. Yes, right. yes, right. Isn't that something? Yes. I'm not going to ask how old you are. Did you make it to your destination yet? Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God let them sat Thank you, Lord. for 40 years. And you trying to get from Richmond to Oakland? All right. You might be around the corner from your blessing. Right. God won't let you get it because of your unbelief. It's so easy for you to jump in your car and get on 80. The 980 in you there. God won't let it happen until you believe he might let your children experience something that you want. And that's exactly what he did to them. Yes, he allowed right. the second generation to go in All and right. not the first. All right. Yes. Unbelief is dangerous. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Then we talk about faith oh, yes. and right. unbelief. Yes. You have to have both of these. Amen. 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 So it is. And God pleasing faith yes. is not believing in spite of the evidence, but rather faith is obeying God Amen. in spite of the circumstances Hallelujah. and the consequences. Hallelujah. So we got two things on the board here. We got one, the situation that was encountered. Y'all ready for the strategy yes. that was explained? All right. Look at this strategy that God has here. Now you talk about strategy that made no sense, God doesn't say, do what makes sense. He says, do what I say, All right. that's faith. Amen. Does this make any sense what he's going to tell them? Well, watch, the proof is in the foot. Faith is doing what God says whether it makes sense or not. All right. Amen. 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 See, a lot of us, God told you to do something, but it don't make sense to you, you won't do it. All right. Okay. Isn't that something God told you to leave this situation alone? Oh, that don't make sense to me. Well, that's why you're dealing with nonsense. Okay. So, yeah, God told you to leave this situation alone. But now nah, it don't make sense to me. Well, that's why you're dealing with a not a nonsense. Okay? Yeah. And how we le need to learn that faith honors God and God honors faith. Consider the strategy they receive from God. God knows they got to go through Jericho. It seemed like they should be ready to fight. Like, let's do a physical fight. Because every time the Jerichoans would be on the top of the wall, they would look and see them like, y'all can't come in here. They yeah. say, keep on knocking, but you what? Can't come in. They can't, y'all read in the beginning, when you in Jericho, you can't go out. Amen now. So the soldiers couldn't go out eat. All right. So they were protected by their exterior perspective who they are. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Let's marinate on that for a minute. Jericho was never fighting. They were protected by their walls. Amen now. No army could come in there. Uh -uh. I need to ask you today. How's your wall doing? Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Now, Can yeah. somebody easily offend you on Facebook? Yeah. Uh -uh. Can somebody text you something and you get upset? Can somebody curse you out and you go ballistic? Uh -huh. Can somebody email you in your feelings? Uh -uh. 
I'm talking about the wall. All right. Now. How's your wall? All right. Hallelujah. You see, Jericho walls was who they were. All right. But I need to ask you, do you have the shield of faith? The breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit. The belt of righteousness. Feet shod with the gospel. How are you protected? Yeah. You see, verses three and four, look what God told them to do. You shall march around the city, all you and your men of war, you shall go all around the city once. Do this for six days. Amen. Basically, God is telling them to get on the train. Isn't that something? God is saying, I need y'all to work out. All right. Because even though you could try to fight this physical battle, All right. but we have to understand the battle is not yours in the first place. Right. It's not your business to figure this out. It's not of your doing to see what you need to do. You can't do nothing. Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord, not yours. The Bible says, vengeance is the Lord, saying, vengeance is mine, saying the Lord. Amen. See, that's the problem with a lot of you. You want to try to do what you can. All right. God can do much more than you can. Amen. 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 Look what he says. And I need the seven priests. They shall bear the seven trumpets Amen. of ram's horns before the ark. The Amen. Ark of the Covenant. Amen. So even though they're there, this chest has the word in it. Hallelujah. It has Aaron's rod in it. Yes. And it has a pot of shogun. Hallelujah. I remember Exodus 16. Amen. When God rained the manna. Amen. So they could eat in the wilderness. Amen. There's a pot of showbread. Hallelujah. Did y'all know that the Ark of the Covenant is still here today? Hallelujah. Nobody knows where it is. It's been said it's over in Ethiopia, but no one knows. All right. What you think about that? The actual Ark of the Covenant is still here. Hallelujah. So if someone opened it, which you can, the two stone tablets Hallelujah. that God carved on Mount Sinai yeah. is still in that chest. Thank you, Jesus. The rod that Moses stuck out yes. at the Red Sea. Hallelujah. And he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. And the sea separated itself. Hallelujah. That's one time fish had to play red light, green light. <laughs> All right now. I might get that tomorrow. Red light, hey, fish couldn't go through there because it was dry. Amen. Now that's why your red snap and taste the way it does. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> then we have the pot of showbread in there. All right. Those are some amazing items that are still here. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? So, but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. Yes, yes, and the yes. priest shall blow the trumpets. Hallelujah. What a foolish sounding strategy. Six days, one lap around the city. And then on the seventh day, seven laps, seven days. Yes. yes. 13 trips around the city. Hallelujah. But not only was there a period of time. Next, we read about the placement of the troops. All right. See, God wants things done in decency and order. Amen. And it has to be done right. Yes, yes. What do you mean the placement of the troops? Verses 6 through 9, God told Joshua, Joshua to put the armed men in the front. Amen. Now. Followed by the seven priests with seven ram's horns and trumpets then the Ark of the Covenant, and finally the rear guard to make sure nobody was sneaking up on them from the rear. 
All right. Yeah. See, a lot of times in your life, people like bringing up your past. Right. Isn't that something? You trying to do what's right. right, right. You trying to serve the Lord. You trying to go to Bible study? You trying to go to church? All right, you trying to be nice to these people? All right. But oh, they want to pull out your DVR. <laughs> they want to DVR who you used to be. But you have to remind them, I'm not who I used to be. I'm not what I ought to be. But I know one thing, God will let me be who I need to be to serve him, to help you, to bless you in spite of anything. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. Plus, we have something called grace. And mercy. David did say, my grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Can you imagine what the enemy must have been thinking during those seven days? Right. I can hear the soldiers on the wall yelling out as they saw them approaching. Here comes the enemy. All Get right. ready to fight. All right. And then Joshua and the armed men followed by the seven priests, followed by the Ark of the Covenant, followed by the rear guard marching around the city. See, it's one thing when people watch you, but they don't know what you're up to. All right. As a old saying, never let them see you sweat. All right. All right. The question, what are you sweating for? All right. No sweat because my God got this. I don't need to be working hard. I don't need to do nothing. I'm going to stand still and let him handle this. Stop sweating. That's the truth. That's the truth. As, as they say, don't sweat the small stuff. Amen. Hey, okay? Yeah. And if that isn't odd enough, we read in verse 10, now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice. Amen. Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth Amen. until the day I say to you, shout. Hallelujah. Then you shall shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all remember that laundry detergent? Yeah. It was called <laughs> shout. Shout it out. It was basically alluding we are filthy. All right. Isaiah 64 and 6 says, For our righteousness are as filthy rain. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go into detail when you look into the Hebrew what the word rag means. Some of y'all may know. It's describing a menstrual cycle rag. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's saying, All you think. You doing all for right. the Lord? All right. It's as a filthy rag. All right. All right. Amen. See, only what you do for Christ will last. Amen. It's Amen. not about you. All it's right. about Him working through you Amen. to do of His will and to do of His good pleasure. Amen. See, the little righteous that we get, it only comes by faith. Hallelujah. Which is not of yourselves. Amen. It's a gift from God, lest any man should boast. Thank you, Lord. I love this part because Thank you, Lord. Joshua is saying, Y'all need to be quiet. All right. When people say stuff about you, don't trim. Right. Let them talk. All right. That's why I always have this little saying. My name must taste so good. All right. Because it's always in your mouth. When people, some people want to have the last word. All right. That's why they laugh. Amen. 
Right. Some people want to talk about you behind your back. All right. That's why they behind you. Joshua tells them, I need y'all to be quiet, man. All right. Don't tell everything about you to everybody. All right. All right. All right. It's sad enough we try to show people who we are by what we wear. Uh -huh. All right. Now. It's a shame that we have these fake false lives on social media. All right. Okay. Why is it that the people that you see on their page, they don't look the same in reality? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm at the store one day. <laughs> I haven't seen this sister in many years. And I passed her and she said, Marvin, you're not going to speak? I said, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was you. Because I know what you look like on Facebook, but you can't bring your filter to say that. I said, I'm so sorry. How you been, by the way? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. I said, wow. And as I was in the checkout, I had to look again at the phone. I said, uh -oh. I better quit playing. True story. And that's the problem. We live one life on social media that don't match your reality. And God is trying to help y'all quit depositing so much on this form because your life and your mouth is writing checks that they can't cash. Sometimes you just have to be quiet and stop talking, yelling, telling everybody your business and all on the news feed. Cut this out. All right. All right. Now, why do you suppose they were not to talk? Isn't this something? God have them walking around. Yes. That city I showed you. Yes. Once a day. All right. Now. How many of y'all get y'all laughing every day? I'm just messing with you. Can you imagine? It's long enough. That you got a million people walking around a city once a day. Now, I'm going to mess with some of y'all. When y'all at the gym, 24 hour knowledge, y'all talking to anybody while you're working out? No. <laughs> you're on your phone, no. listening to music. <laughs> Why do you think God told? Joshua to tell him to be quiet while y'all walk. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you why. Because Joshua knew through human instinct and nature. And he knew that there would be some among them who would spread doubt All right. throughout the camp. All right. We already knew they had a dose of unbelief through their parents. All right. That's why you have to understand your children are a reflection of you. Hallelujah. Amen. So Joshua saw the first generation didn't make it. All right. So he's trying to see if this generation have some DNA traits All of right. talking too much and murmuring. Y'all yes, yes. remember when they crossed the Red Sea, they got impatient. Yes. <clears throat> they got the talking. They wanted to make a golden calf. Y'all right. remember the story? Oh, yes. Joshua yes. is checking something here. Amen. He want to see if y'all going to be quiet All while right. you do what God told you to do. Hallelujah. 
You see, it only takes a few negative naysayers All right. to quench the work of God. Y'all got some naysayers in your camp, in your clip, on your page. Uh-uh. Yeah, you got them kind of people. They just pass by your page just to see if you're a pity party. Uh-uh. A lot of people don't really want to know how you do it. They want to know how bad you do it. Because when you when they see you excelling and God is blessing you, they get angry. What kind of mess is that? He could hear them saying this. What are we doing? We just going in circles. Yeah, that's a good quote. We just walking around in circles. But some of us are doing it all else. All right. <clears throat> they say, we look silly out here walking around this city. This is no way to win a war. All right. Besides, I can hear them laughing at us from the other side on the wall. Why don't we do something? All right. This is what you normally do when you find yourself faced with an obstacle, a trial and tribulation situation. Mm -hmm. They were doing something. They were obeying the word of God. Amen. They didn't have to understand it all. God never told them to understand it all. He just said, obey it. So round and round, they went. Amen. That's called the ring around the rose. All right. See, if you're in a relationship and it's a Ring around the rosy. If you want a financial situation, it's a ring around the rosy. Come on, Pastor. All right, all right. If you want a situation, ship, ring around the rosy. All right. See, a lot of us have to quit putting our right foot in uh, and take your right foot out. All right. You have to quit putting your left foot okay, in. Then right. somebody might want to shake it all about. <laughs> Then you do the whole keep on keep, and then you turn yourself around. That's what repentance is all about. <laughs> what do you mean a silent march? Most parades, people are walking up and down McDonald, San Pablo Avenue, Broadway. When you have a parade, it's loud. God says, I want a silent march. Amen. The enemy poised in position for battle. All right. And they watched him walk in silence. Yes. See, your walk supposed to be silent. Amen. Amen. Your walk with Jesus Christ is supposed to be silent. Amen. It's a lonely walk. Hallelujah. But it's supposed to be silent. The only thing that's supposed to be visible is the fruit of spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah, see, they walked in silence Thank you, Lord. around the city and then retreated. You know, that makes them up every day. They think they come in to fight, they walk around, boom, they're about to go. Never let people know your moves. Your every move. I'm going to mess with somebody. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love phone etiquette. Did you know there's a book that deals with phone etiquette? Page 102. When somebody calls you, that means they are the host connect. All right. Because you wasn't paying any mind. Right. right. Host connects. Hello, how are you doing? When a person that's receiving has taken control of the conversation. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> messed up right there because I called you. 
Meaning, I'm not going to say nobody's thinking about people, but the host connects. All right. They should oversee the conversation. Right. That's what brings about communication. Now, if a person chooses not to say anything, we need to not necessarily figure out what the topic is. All right. But my point being is this. When God is speaking, Amen. let him talk. Amen. Give him the flow. Because prayer Hallelujah. is talking to God. Amen. Amen. After you finish praying, Hallelujah. you're supposed to be quiet and listen. Amen. Amen. Normal way. I'm talking to my mother, right? right? Now, watch this. Mama, just ask me, what do I want to eat today? What would you like to eat today? I communicated one sentence. She's speaking back to me. I left the conversation. Uh, what am I saying? A lot of us do God like that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We pray to him. He's getting to, ready to tell you what to do. You didn't got up off your knees and bounced. <laughs> Stay put and wait. We love listening to the gossip. People be stuck on the gossip so much, they waiting on the next word to come out your lips like they hanging off a cliff. They're in suspense, wanting more. But instead of gossip, we need to be spreading the gospel. Look at this. We can hear the watchman on the wall yelling out, here they come again. They're ready to fight. Only to watch them walk around the city in silence and then bounce. See, that's strategic. They just see us walking, but we're not talking. All right. see, a lot of us be walking and doing too much talk. All right. Then the walk don't line up with the talk. That's a whole other can of beans right there. All right. Six days of that. Here they come. There they go. Here they come. Here they go. Here they come. There they go. People watch you get blessed. Yes. People watch you pray. Yes. People watch you walk. People watch you talk. Amen. Let me ask you something. Why do you suppose God chose this strategy for defeating Jericho? I believe that God gave them a ridiculous strategy so that when the victory came, when the walls came tumbling down, that nobody could take the credit. But God. Amen. See, you want God to get you. You want God to get the credit, but you got people always wanting the credit in your life for the things God has blessed you with. April 18, 1993. Nobody didn't have nothing to do with that. But God. Nobody can say, I invited you to church for this revival. What? Is that what you want? You want that little five cent worth of credit saying, I brought you to church. That's like you brought somebody to church and they life and soul got saved. And the least bit you want to do is say, I brought you to church. What? Paul said, somebody plants. Hallelujah. Somebody waters. But God gives the increase. That's what I learned. Son. Watch out for the people in your life that want to speak on what God has done for you. That they want to take credit, but their credit score might be 480. Don't let the 480s try to get the best of what God has done for you. Talking too much. Everybody's busy. They co signing. They trying to see what God is doing in your life. 
Why don't you do something for God for a change? When the walls came down, God did this so he can get the glory. Not Joshua the leader, not the armed men, not the seven priests, not the real God, but all of the credit and the glory goes to the praise of the God. That's what excites me the most about our journey in faith. Amen. It's bigger than any of us. Amen. And when it is all said and done, yes. we will be dedicating our services to the Lord Amen. on the fourth Sunday of this month. No pastor will get the glory. No committee will get the glory. But all that glory goes to God. Amen. He says, I'm the Lord. That is my name, and I will not share my glory with another. Amen. He's a jealous Amen. God. But it's a shame when you got jealous people around you. Some people are so jealous. They're just like jelly. They have no substance. You get them out of their comfort zone. You get them out of their jar and they just fly. Case, they spread everywhere. They try to spread your business like PB&J. They think they're the next, next best thing to slice bread. Yeah, these are the jelly folk. Yeah. One, we did the situation that was encountered. Two, the strategy that was explained. Three, the success that was experienced. Amen. Now. And I'm going to take my seat. They soon learned that God's work is done God's way. Amen. And God's way is the faith way. Amen. That's what makes our journey of faith so exciting. Amen. This journey that we are on was founded by faith, wasn't it? Amen. It is being fueled by faith and it will be finished by faith. Amen. Founded by faith, fueled by faith, finished by faith. Hallelujah. This journey that we're on was started by faith and it is by faith we will succeed. Amen. 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 Now, let me show you how they experienced success at Jericho. They talk about this shout of faith in verse 20. Verse 20 says, so when, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. Do you not know that, do you know what the shout was? It was their outward expression of their inward confidence in God. Amen. Do you know what they were doing, walking around those walls and shouting? The same thing we're doing in our journey, in our faith. Amen. Do you find these moments in your life when God does something for you? And he blesses you, right? Amen. Thank you, Lord. What you do, you shout. Yes. All right. yes. That's what you're yes. supposed to do. Amen. And the same thing we are doing in this journey of faith, they were risking everything on the faithfulness of God. Amen. Amen. So you have to come become an area in your life where you're no longer taking risks. All right. Amen. Amen. I remember all the pinball machines. Before you put your quarter in, it says what? Play at your own risk. I think there was a song in the 70s. Play at your own risk. I got the name of the group. You risk your life every day. All right. Yeah. If you have not even accepted Christ in your life, yes, Lord. you walk out the door. If you don't know him as your personal Lord, say, that's a risk. Amen. Now. But once you place your life and you and your life over to him, Hallelujah. all risks Amen. are gone. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you can yeah. walk in his goodness. You can walk in his blessing. 
you can walk in the victory. Amen. But they were taking their future on God's faithfulness. So when we read that there was a shout of faith, Hallelujah. that's a sound of faith. Hallelujah. Some of the people shouted when the priests blew their trumpets. Do you know what that sound is? Because Hallelujah. that's what God told them to do. Yes, 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 and when yes. you do what God tells you what to do, regardless of the circumstances, Regardless of the consequences, regardless of the cost, yes, you exercise God pleasing faith. Yes, amen. For faith honors God and God honors faith. Amen. But not only was there the shout of faith, it was the sound of it. Hallelujah. What is the sight of faith? Verse 20. And it happened. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout and that the wall fell flat. Hallelujah. When the people went up into the city, every man straight before him and they took the city. Amen. That was why God was building their legs. Amen. Walking Hallelujah. flat yeah. 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 for 13 days, right? All right. Yes. Now watch this. <clears throat> After the wall came down, they had to walk up down. All right. Yes. That's 60 feet. So God had them walking around preparing them because they was going to have to go up. Amen. Sometimes we don't understand why God tells us to do certain things because he's preparing you for the situation. He's preparing you for the change in your life, Amen. but you have to go through the challenge to receive the change. Amen. But you don't want the challenge. That's why everything has no change in your life and everything is strange in your life because there's no change with the challenge that was given. See, God is good for setting you up. All right. Did y'all realize that God had a little basket in the brook with Moses in it. Amen. God guided this little basket up into Pharaoh's court where his daughter and their friends were bathing. Yeah. They saw the little baby. The setup was the cloth in the basket. Amen. It was a Hebrew cloth. Mm -hmm. See, you don't pay attention to everything when you want it. You see, Pharaoh's daughter, when she saw the baby, she even knew there was a Hebrew cloth in it. See, when you want things so bad, you don't look at the details. That's a word for somebody today. When you want something so bad, step back and examine it. All right. All right. Yeah. Because you'll find yourself being a red flag collector. All right. All right. See, when you see the red flags, don't be a red flag collector. All right. Then you're going to be a red flag waver. Uh, yeah. All because right. you're going to start waving the red flag to attract more red flags. Uh, all right. okay. Then you have enough red flags to make a big quilt. Uh, then you're going to cover yourself up in the embarrassment uh, uh, of being a red flag collector. Uh, 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 uh. So I said that to say, we got this little baby, and watch how sharp God is. Didn't Moses grow up in there? All right. I love God's sense of humor. He turned Pharaoh's court into a daycare. All right. Okay, now. All right, now. I'm going to let my leader grow up in a nice environment. Hallelujah. Second in command. Thank you, Jesus. Not knowing I was going to change the channel or change the script okay. of the man whom I said. He chose him in spite of issues that he had. I need to remind somebody today, God can use you whatever situation you have. He can use you if you didn't fail down. He can use you if you didn't fail over. Hallelujah. Fell under. Hallelujah. But that's what he does. 
Yeah. He's looking for the weak, look oh, down yeah. things All right, in now. this life to confound those who are wise. Amen. So he lets his leader grow up Thank you, Jesus. and turn Pharaoh's palace into a daycare. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The people that God sent him to, they were outside Hallelujah. in a training camp. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? They were stepping, building straw. All right. All right. See, God is so shy because they're getting mad at Moses because he keeps going up in front of Pharaoh, getting angry with Moses. And what does he do? He makes it harder on my people. All right. The people say, Moses, will you stay out that man's face? Because every time you go in there telling him, I am sent you, he makes it hard on us. All right. All right. But the beautiful thing is, they just stepped in. Amen. Because God is basically saying, I'm preparing you guys because y'all are going to get the walk. <laughs> Amen. Now. Hallelujah. Yeah, because. You guys are going to spend 40 years out here in this wilderness. All right. Now. You're going to run into a Red Sea, and I need y'all to walk through All right. under picture baptism. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all caught that. Hallelujah. 2.5 million people went down in the water and came up on the other side. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So God actually turned Egypt Hallelujah. into a daycare. Hallelujah. In an exercise. All right. Amen. Amen. So don't be dismayed when you find yourself in life's trials and tribulations because God is preparing you for something much greater Amen. to do in His good, to do in His good pleasure, Amen. to do His work. Amen. Now, let me ask you something. What caused those walls to fall? Was it the trumpets they blew? Was it their shouting? Was it their marching? Hebrews 11.30 says, the faith, Amen. by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled. The Amen. So faith made the walls fall. Amen. So faith can make all the walls and roadblocks, ditches, potholes. Obstacles in your life fall around you. As long as you're willing to walk by faith. By faith, they fell. By faith, everything collapses. Amen. By faith, they fell. You need to get that down. By faith, they fell. Not by trying, but by trusting. You put it down. All the walls fell by faith. Yes, but do you know what the greatest wall is that you can face? Hallelujah. The wall of separation. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. The wall that separates you from God. Yes. Is the sin wall. All right. Yes, Ephesians Lord. 2 and 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. And not of yourselves. Well, it's a gift of God, yeah. not of yourselves, Hallelujah. lest anyone should boast. Amen. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, Amen. which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. Amen. You see, this same Jesus Hallelujah. went before us and removed the sin wall that separated you and I from God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The same way the children of Israel marched around the city of Jericho. Yes, Lord. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, Amen. we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And verse 2 says, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him and we boast in the hope of God's glory. Amen. Now. So this same Jesus, he marched around your situation. Amen. Now. This same Jesus 
who was faithful unto death. Yes, yes. March around your situation. Amen. Now, he only marched one time. Right. And guess how did he march around this situation? He marched inside of you. Hallelujah. Because he Thank was you. with you from the beginning and to your end. Hallelujah. He's marching inside of you today. Thank you. And he has a better, greater way. To get you out of what you've gotten into. This same Jesus. Who was beat and bruised. But Jesus removed your obstacles. And gave you an opportunity. To eternal life. This same Jesus. Who they tried in an unjust court. He endured all of that yes. so he could remove your obstacles yes. and give Amen. you a brand new opportunity. Amen. 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 This same Jesus yes. who said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. He did this by removing your obstacles and giving you a new opportunity. Amen. Thank you. This same Jesus who hung, bled, and died. Thank you, Jesus. He did this for you Thank to you. remove your obstacles, but provide you a new opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, That's man. what he does. Thank you, Jesus. They placed one nail in his left wrist, but he did that to give you a new opportunity. Amen. Now. They placed another nail in his right wrist. He endured your obstacles to provide you a new opportunity. The same Jesus received a nail in his feet to provide you a new opportunity to overcome your obstacles. He said, it is finished. Thank you. And he endured all of it to give you a brand new opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. He said, here am I, send me. And he came. Hallelujah. To knock your wall, to Amen. knock your barricades, Amen. your blockages, your hurdles. Amen. He endured all of that. Hallelujah. To give you a new opportunity. Amen. Now, thank you. And the story Jesus. just doesn't stop there because they placed him in an old borrowed tomb. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And this same Jesus stayed there all day long. He stayed there all day Saturday. Hallelujah. Late Saturday evening. Late yes. Saturday night. Yes. But early. Thank you, early. Early. Thank you, early. Early. Thank you, early. Thank you, early. Thank you, early. early. Thank you, early. Early. Thank you, 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 early. Thank to Thank walk, you. to talk, yes. to pray, Thank you. to lead, yes. to God, yes. to show for his sufferings that he endured the cross for you. Amen. So you can have a better opportunity, yes. even though when opportunity don't show up and not for you. Yes. But he rose with all power in heaven and earth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He did it. Hallelujah. And this same Jesus coming again in like manner. Hallelujah. The question is, will you be Amen. Will you get your life right or will you be left? All right. All right. Amen. Let's Amen. give God some praise Amen. and name. All heads out, all our souls. If Father God would come before your presence this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Or this afternoon, thanking you because you're so worthy to be praised. And we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. And Father, if there's anyone who has never accepted Christ in their life, they want to give this opportunity a try because I'm so tired of all these obstacles that have been confronting me day in and day out. Yes, Lord. But he is the obstacle mover. Amen. 
is the opportunity that knocking at the door yes, Lord. that we tend not to open for him. That's why Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. Amen. If any man hears my voice, allow me to come in and I will sup with him. Yes. So Father, if there's someone who would like to make one way assembly their church home, all they have to do is raise their hand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Father, last but not least, there's someone who would like to be baptized. All they have to do is raise their hand. And Father, we're just yes, doing Lord. it in an orderly fashion because I understand tradition says that somebody needs to join first and be baptized. You see, Jesus couldn't stand traditions. Thank you. In Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see, John. All right. He just lets you lined up and baptize. He says, I baptize you with water to repentance. Yes, Lord. And he that cometh after me shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and the fire. Amen. Thank you. Thank so you. if you just need to be baptized and you are at another church, that's perfectly fine. We just need to make sure you identify with death, burial, and resurrection and have a pure conscience towards God. Yes, Lord. Amen. We Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. The Lord command us to let's give God the praise. Does everyone have their sacraments? Amen. We get ready to discern the Lord's body, then we'll let you go on your way and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, if you notice the new sacraments, the bread is underneath the cup for your convenience. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come before your presence this afternoon, thanking you Thank for all you your blessings. Lord, Master, forgive us for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Lord, Master, remove anything that's not right within our hearts, fear, minds, and our souls. Father, forgive us for all of our sins of omission and sins of commission. Father, if we looked at someone, said something, or thought something inappropriately of someone, Father, forgive us. Cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, you said without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. Father, we thank you for thank doing you, this. Lord. Finish thank work you. at Long Gotham's Hill. And Lord, we thank you as you thank allow you. us to fashion our minds back at Long Gotham's Hill for what you did. Yes, Lord. Master, if it be thy will, allow us to keep our minds centered and focused on what you did. We ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 As we hold this bread, it is symbolic of the Lord Jesus Christ's body. The reason Jesus said, this is my broken body, because as he broke the bread, his body was literally broken. He was beaten on the back by a device called a scourge. This particular device had balls at the end with spikes, five leather straps, and they would fling it, and the balls would attach with the spikes to the flesh, but the balls would stay put. And just the flick of a wrist, they would snatch it, and it would pull the flesh off his back as if when you meet tender eyes. Mm -hmm. But I do believe Isaiah said that by your stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. He was bruised for me. Amen. So when he says my body was broken for you, that's what that talks about. And we know that the spear was drove into his heart. So he died literally, physically, his spirits of a broken heart. But he says, do this in remembrance of me to show forth 
I suffer in death, my um, sufferings in death. Yes, the Lord. And he says, take y'all of it and eat, and they all did eat. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. Now, as we hold the fruit of the vine, this is symbolic of Jesus' blood. And when he poured the fruit of the vine, he says, this is my shedded blood that is given as a ransom for you. It represents my life, my sufferings, and my death. And it also atones for the New Testament and the New Covenant. And then he said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. He said, drink ye all of it, and they all did drink. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment of these mortal bodies, but we did it for the nourishment of the soul. And we did, as the Lord has commanded us to, we just have three brief announcements and we'll be on our way. And as you know, uh, we are in the month of February and we had a great success last month when Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church came to fellowship with us. Amen. And we prayed, played the Family Feud Bible edition and we had a great time with that. Amen. And um, on the third Sunday of this month, as you know, the second Sunday is Super Bowl, so that's why we will not have that. But on the third Sunday at 4 p.m., Pastor Mustafa Mui from Basic Ministry of San Leandro, they will be coming to play with us. Amen? Amen. And we have another church in March coming, Pastor Washington, the Garden of Peace Ministry. So we are doing very well with our fellowship there. So at the end of the year, we're going to have pretty much a fellowship with 12 churches. How about that? Amen. All right. Next announcement very briefly. Uh, as you know, um, on the fourth Sunday here at One Way Assembly, we will be having a guest speaker, which is Bishop Rodney Andrews of the Comeback uh, Christian Fellowship Church. They will be coming, and we are so excited to have them coming on board to provide us with the word. Amen. And, um, Arthur Natasha Simon will be present. I guess yeah. she'll be bringing her book. Amen. So we have a lot in store this month at the um, One Way Assembly. Amen. Amen. Last but not least, on the fourth Sunday, that's what happens here at eleven o'clock. But then at three o'clock, we will be going over to Come Back Christian Center, twenty-seven eleven Havens Court, Oakland, California, nine four six zero five. Amen. I'll Amen. be speaking there at three o'clock. So if those who connected, that would be a blessing. Amen. Enjoy the fellowship there. So yes, God has a lot of things going on in one way assembly this month. Amen. Amen. So this will be our first outing. But I will tell you this: we are going to be in a, in store for a treat that eleven o'clock service here. Amen. Amen. And we very quickly will be praying, praying for our church leader ministries here. Amen. 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 If that's nothing else, other than that, it's good to see each and every one of you. To God be the glory again. Amen. Thank you for your patience. And we already know that Jesus is always at the end of the corner before we can get caught up in the out. Amen. He's already down there. Trying to lead and get us right. Yes, Amen. That was always said from Brother Homer Williams. Yes. <laughs> A lot of his sayings still stick today. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give us a prayer very briefly and we can be dismissed. Amen. Yeah, if you're looking for Bonnie's book, it's on that right side over there. It should be by the um, good to see Sister Bonnie with us today. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, 
and let us pray. Uh, dear Father God, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard Lord. on today. Thank Father, we you. also pray that you will bless and sanctify this offering. Yes, Lord. That it will be used for the building for my edification sake. Yes, Lord. We ask that you give us traveling grace as we depart from this place, but not your sight. We ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. Amen.